So the collateral they had was worth less and less as rates went up more and more. And this has been a phenomenon that's happened over the year, not just to these banks that have failed, but actually to the Federal Reserve's own balance sheet. I don't believe that the chairman of the Fed, Jerome Powell, has a clue as to the price of anything in the real world. In the absence of financial certainty and in the presence of financial chaos, it, it's hard assets, it's, it's real assets, whether they're precious metals like gold and silver. They have a lasting power mm. in the real economy to help transform the real economy. G'day, Shay Russell here from Rock Solid Investing, and today's video couldn't come at a better time. Now, just yesterday, I was having lunch with Nomi Prins, uh, who is a well-respected American economist who left behind a lucrative Wall Street career to, ex show, uh, to expose the shady banking practices and how the Fed often has to come in and bail the banks out because of the problems that they brought amongst themselves. Now, um, we were having lunch uh, about a week after Silicon Valley Bank, Silvergate Bank, and Signature Bank had all collapsed in the same week. And then less than seven days after those three collapsing, uh, First Republic Bank in the US also started, si started showing signs of wobbling, which is why uh, today's video is so timely. Because one of the first questions that I ask Nomi uh, is, is this a, all these banks going under, because they are related to tech stocks and crypto, uh, is it a sign that the tech boom is over for good? Or is there something more sinister happening in the banking, banking system? Her answer might surprise you. Now, make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I ask Nomi what investments are on her radar when make markets are extremely volatile. Joining me today is the incredible author, and I'm lucky to call my friend, Nomi Prims. Nomi, how are you? I am great, Shay. It's so amazing to be here in Melbourne with you. How many continents have we caught up on now? <laughs> well, let's see. We've done Vancouver, Canada. We've done... Boca. Miami, Boca in, in the United States. We've done Berlin. And now Europe. Melbourne. And now Melbourne. So we're, we're getting there. We're, getting there. <laughs> we're, do, we're doing pretty well. We haven't we quite yet had the chance to have a pool match in this city, though. So we might have this to save right. it for the next, next one. Next trip. Now, Nomi, you are in Australia. You are doing some incredible work right now with miners. But before we touch on that, I want to talk about your book. And I actually couldn't think of a better, more newsworthy time to talk about your latest book called Permanent Distortions, How Financial Markets Abandoned the Real Economy. Now, in the US, in the last seven days, three Banks have collapsed. Right. Now, tell me, this banking collapse, is it, is it proof that the tech money's flown out or does this actually hide to a deeper systemic problem in the banking industry? Oh, that is such a great question because because the, the bigger story on the outside is that this is a bunch of tech companies who over leveraged, they borrowed too much, their business models didn't work. And then, of course, when rates went up so quickly with the Fed raising and hiking rates and their more tightening monetary policy since last March, um, they've just not had the ability to raise money or to use their money effectively and their their shares have plummeted. So that's one thing. Tech sector hasn't done well in this rate hiking environment. The bigger story is that the Fed hasn't done well in this rate hiking environment. Because if you look at the three banks that have failed, right, you look at Signature, Silvergate, um, and also Silicon Valley Bank, yes, they were tech and crypto centric, but they also were effectively hedging their loans with treasury bond and mortgage bond collateral. So it's not like they didn't have a hedge towards this, this more sort of speculative lending that they were doing. It wasn't a perfect hedge, as we have seen. Mm. But the problem is that when the Fed started raising rates by so much so quickly, it caused this very rapid deceleration, depreciation in the price of treasury bonds and connected mortgage bonds. So the collateral they had was worth less and less as rates went up more and more. And this has been a phenomenon that's happened over the year, not just to these banks that have failed, but actually to the Federal Reserve's own balance sheet, right? Yep. The Federal Reserve owns almost $9 trillion worth of treasury bonds and mortgage-backed bonds. So when the Fed raises rates on its own bonds, the value of its own balance sheet goes down, but it doesn't have to report results like the rest of the banking community. No one's going to do a run on the Fed. Right. Yeah. So so it has this very cozy position and Powell has a cozy position as chairman of the Federal Reserve of being able to say, maybe there's going to be some pain in the economy to fight inflation by raising rates. Maybe there's going to be some pain in the job market, which is, quote, too hot right now. But what he didn't seem to notice in his own backyard and the Fed is supposed to be the largest bank regulator in the world. Mm -hmm. That is their actual job is to regulate the banking system, is that these actions of rapidly accelerating rate hikes had this repercussion of crushing components of the banking system and showing the instabilities that already exist in the banking system 
and how the Fed's made them worse. Now, this is something you touch on in your book, and that is basically how the Fed is detached um, from, I know, I know you, you refer to it as Main Street. So is there any connection coming back to reality? Like, what's the, well, I don't want to give away the conclusion of your yeah. book, but has, is the Fed aware of their errors or are they just blindly fumbling through while they try and get back in touch with the real economy? It's interesting that you say get back in touch with the real economy because I don't think it's ever going to actually happen, <laughs> um, which is part of why I call it permanent distortion, how the, how the financial markets abandon the real economy forever, but with the help of the Fed. I don't believe that the chairman of the Fed, Jerome Powell, has a clue as to the price of anything in the real world. And neither do many of the people within the Fed, certainly not the people that actually run policy. I'm not talking about all the individuals who work as employees for the Fed. They're very aware. And internally within the Fed and within central banks around the world, they're very concerned about how rapidly raising the cost of money is impacting um, the level of mortgage payments, the level of credit card payments, the amount of money that they actually um, have to deplete their savings accounts for in order to pay for what's going on. Because at the end of the day, the Fed and other central banks cannot actually fight inflation. So the big lie here is that they can. And Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has positioned himself as a superhero inflation fighter. And if we just raise rates, even if it causes some pain, inflation is going to abate. The reality is the Fed cannot, nor can any other central bank, impact the cost of fuel, the cost of fuel, food, the cost of rents, the cost of materials, because those are supply and demand driven. And all they can do is talk about around the edges potentially fighting inflation. And that's the lie and that's the danger of the incompetence of the Federal Reserve, is that what they say they're trying to do is something that's out of their power to do. And that disconnect is what causes all this additional financial uncertainty in markets, trying to guess what each inflation number means relative to what the Fed is thinking it's going to do with respect to that inflation number. And it's, it's a very, very chaotic world that we have right now because of that. Now, before we touch on how everybody can get their hands on your book, what brings you to Australia? What are you hunting for? What are you looking for while you're out here on Australia, out here in Australia? So this is a good question because I'm here right now um, and I'm going through the country talking to miners, talking to people in the financial community um, and happily talking to you know so much about, about all of that, um, is that in the absence of financial certainty, and in the presence of financial chaos, it, it's hard assets, it's, it's real assets, whether they're precious metals like gold and silver, whether they're industrial metals like copper and steel, whether they're rare earth materials or minerals like lithium or zinc or manganese, they have a lasting power mm. in the real economy to help transform the real economy. And now, particularly with everything so chaotic in the financial sector and the financial markets, it's to the hard assets that are involved in the building of real transformation and real physical structures like we're standing on right here and like we see behind us in these buildings um, that actually matter for the real economy. And, I, and I'm here in this moment to, to talk about that and to explore that here in Australia, which is a, a country so rich in, in all of those hard assets. Yes, yeah, so Australia uh, did hit the geological jackpot. It did. <laughs> uh, we got it houses and holes, as uh, I think the saying. Yeah. Now, Naomi, before we wrap up, tell me how can everybody get their hands on what I consider to be a must read when it comes to understanding uh, the central bank disconnect with the economy today? Where can people find you? So first of all, on my website, which is www.nomiprince.com, right there you've got information about how to buy my book, Permanent Distortion, um, and my other books, the interviews that I'm doing on TV around the world, the writings that I'm doing. And also you can get a chance to get on the inside of what I'm thinking. Uh, actually, as I'm thinking it, <laughs> as I'm developing my thoughts, um, by signing up for my mailing list, which there's a there's a button to do um, at the top homepage of my website. So www.nomiprince.com. Com. I'll make sure there is a link to Nomi's website in the subscription of uh, under today's video. Nomi, it's such a pleasure. It was fantastic to have lunch with you, but it's just even better to see you in person again. Thank you so much. Thanks Jay. for being here. Thank you. So what do you think? Make sure you drop a comment and tell me below. Now, if you want to get your hands on Nomi's book to understand more about how the banking sector works and how the central bank has been forced to come in and bail these banks out, it is I highly recommend you reading it. There is a link in the description below this video so you can go direct to Nomi's website and buy the book. Now, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and uh, you know click the little red alert bell as well because I have two extremely exciting guests to share with you this month this month and I promise you, you aren't going to want to miss what they have to say. All right, that's it for today. I'll see you around.